the co-founder of Apple, is here at Go to Copenhagen. Mr. Wozniak, it's a pleasure to have you here. You just met with uh, a big group from the Danish tech scene. What was your uh, impression? Well, I was actually I actually knew that they were basically largely from programmers and that the like. So I was just trying to make my answers in ways that would fit the, the audience. Um, looked like the audience was attentive and appreciating. And uh, and and again, what what's your advice for for the Danish uh, tech scene? What's what what do you think is key to getting a good uh, you know tech environment here and a, and a good tech startup scene here? Mm -hmm. I think it all starts in elementary school when you're very young, because by the time you're about 20 years old your personality is settling in for life. Are you going to be an inventor, a creative person, going after new things, or are you just going to be trying to look for jobs and ask questions, where's the money, how can I have a position that controls things? You know, it's, it's that sort of thing. And you want to see more creativity. So you really want people growing up with this idea of, I don't know, you're not trained and the answers are all in books. The answers are all your own and what you find out, um, explore and innovate and find new ways. You uh, are watching technology, obviously. You know, you saw a trend back when you founded uh, Apple. When you when you look at technology now, what do you think is the most important thing that's that's happening in the world right now, uh, the world of technology? Ooh, a lot of what you used to own as a product, you cannot own anymore. For example, you have a phone, and there might be a hundred thousand people that wrote bits of the code that make it work. No one person can analyze one product and understand what it is. When I was young, almost everything you bought, even a car, you could kind of know every component in it and how it worked and why it worked and what it did. Also, um, that was you know. So in the old days, you owned things, but now we're going to a subscription market. Almost everybody who starts a company wants to be a unicorn, and the only way to be a unicorn isn't to sell a product, it's to entrap you and have you subscribing and a regular customer and build up a, a database and really kind of entrap you into their ways. Habits don't go away. And I think that's a large part of the tech scene today. Um, it's, it's not so much, oh, how can I do something totally new that's never been done? Only what value does it have? How can I um, you know, make money off of it? And uh, what technology that you see right now uh, does have has or will have the biggest impact on the world we, we live in? Well, a lot of technology, I can't predict some of these things because they're so new. The ones that would have the biggest impact, you're always uncertain of, or every single person would know it. We'd all read the same books and the same articles. Quantum computing is one of those variables. It could be huge or it could be you know, meaningless for really things that matter and, and make a difference. Um, Artificial intelligence is just the application of computers today. It should not be called intelligence. It isn't. It isn't going to get there. It isn't even close. We haven't even thought about making it as smart as the brain of an ant. Um, we've never thought about building a computer that would say, what should I do today? You see, that's the difference with the, intu uh, the intuition of a human brain that we really haven't gotten close to. As far as what I do see um, evolving and being important, I think more and more robotics and I'm hoping they get more personal. Right now we have personal assistants that you can talk to and ask questions and that's brain stuff. But there's a lot of things around your house that, uh, you know, Roomba is a good example of a device that actually does some work in the house for you. I'd like a Roomba that, that sits washing my car every night in the garage or in the driveway, just washes it all night long, one centimeter at a time, very slowly steps, but it gets it done by the morning all on its own. I'd like things that maybe wash my dishes. I can just shove them into one, one bowl and it can sit there a little robot that picks them up and doesn't damage them. Think about a child, think about yourself, how you learned to hold things and not damage them. You went through a whole learning experience as a human being. And we haven't talked about robots doing that. Taking the step in artificial intelligence someday, way off in the future maybe, we'll actually start approaching it as a learning the same way with long time frames, the same way humans learn to do everything, like walk and balance even. It doesn't come, doesn't come as, as quickly as we want to. Even the humanoid robots to this day are very slow. So it, does, it, it sounds like you don't believe AI will impact the world as much as other people may think. Um, I'm not sure what everyone thinks, but I think they prefer go to that intelligence side, that it's actually doing thinking like a human brain, and it, nothing is shown to be even close to that. And the, uh, like self-driving cars, uh, the situations that come up, just a merging lane, and the dumbest human being in the world can maybe see something up in advance and start adapting to it, and none of this artificial intelligence is, is close to that, and really going to be able to solve the ones that are unknown. I know a few that I've seen, but then I keep seeing more and more. My wife and I drive a lot, 
and sure, 99% of our drive is free and nothing happening and artificial intelligence works, self-driving works fine. I'm not gonna call it artificial intelligence. It's not intelligence. It's just the extreme end of what computers can do. <laughs> so where, if you were to found a company today, what would that company do? Wow. I think it would be um, building Internet of Things, small little devices, new ones that don't exist yet. I try to th you know, think of very strange ideas, something I could have for myself that doesn't exist that I couldn't buy. And the reason is, is I always avoided doing what other people were doing. I was very shy and I didn't want to compete head on. And then we're both coming out of the same engineering books and you're going to do the same as me. And if you've got more money and more big company, you're going to be, no, I, I want to go off and do very unusual things, even if they don't have any money value to people or to comp starting a company, but they're just fun to do. I, I'd, I'd still want to be doing that and writing programs that solve little games and puzzles in life. Apple has become a, a massive company, one of the biggest in the, the world. A lot of people are investing in it. A lot of people here in Denmark as well interact with their products, invest in Apple. What do you think of Apple when you look at it uh, today? What do you think of the p position Apple is in uh, today? Well, Apple is good and flexible. We were flexible in our earliest days. We started out with a game machine and discovered sort of early on with a spreadsheet program, these small computers can do things the big mainframes can't. That's where the big money is in the market. And we diverted off into a lot more of the business type stuff. And eventually over time, we saw that m the mouse-based computer that sees the world in two dimensions, the screen in two dimensions, and a lot of humanist features call a screen a desktop, something familiar to humans, have a little icon that looks like a paintbrush and it paints. Um, th that was a step that we saw and we took. All these steps were like, they involved a lot of different user interface methods, you know, the mouse and then the touch screens on the iPhone and all that. And, and so we've always been adapting to where we see the future heading right now. We've gotten into a lot of financial stuff. It all started with touch ID, using your fingerprint instead of having to type passwords for a phone. And sure enough, every other major phone manufacturer in the world followed Apple's lead. But Apple's lead then let it have the first phone that you could actually use to tap and pay for things. It's called Apple Pay. Google phones could do that before, but you had to buy one of two Google phones in the world. I did, because I experiment a lot. Self-experimentation is what my life's about. And um, you had to, then you had to turn the phone on, type the unlock code of the phone. Then you had to run an app, find and run an app and run it, Google Wallet or whatever it was called then. And then you had to type in the PIN number for a credit card and then you could tap and pay. Wait a minute, what's wrong with that scenario? A credit card's faster. Apple came up with one, you hold, don't even turn your phone on. You hold it over the, the, the retail device and put your finger on to identify yourself and you're done. You know, it's like those kind of thinkings. How do we make life very easy and simple for things that people do every day, all the time and make people feel happy with what they've got? So do you feel confident that, that Apple can stay ahead of its competitors? I think Apple's going into new markets now, and especially Apple Pay and the Apple Credit Card. And uh, that, what an incredible thing for a company as huge as Apple to come with a credit card that really has decent features. Okay, it's not the extreme, you know, highest um, cash back in the world, but it works so nicely. And um, and I think I think that Apple is seeing a lot of its services taking over Apple TV. I've only um, had time. I've been I've been very busy. I've only had time to watch one show so far. Um, the uh, the morning show, and I really like it. <laughs> That's good. And I don't have to. I watch Stranger Things on Netflix. I don't watch too many of these new ones. I don't watch television. So that's why I don't see too much. But I'm very happy that uh, Apple's on the right track to what people want. Steve, uh, a lot of tech companies say that the most important thing in staying staying ahead is uh, is getting the right people. For instance, engineer, uh, engineers, engineers. How do companies, tech companies and others, attract the right talent? Uh, what would make you join a company to, today? What, what would the company need to attract talent like yourself? Yeah, if I liked a company for its products or how they were already a part of my life, I would want to be in on that company if I already appreciated the company. And I don't know where it comes from, so I can't give you a direct formula. Um, companies approach um, uh, like let's say university students and say, would you come work for us next year? And we have all these perks and perks and perks and perks and perks. Um, I, I think that's, that's effective and it works, but it's not the way I would go about something. And, and I had a good friend from Mexico and I actually, believe it or not, I, he was in a country that couldn't appreciate his brain and didn't have the university resources for computer stuff. This was decades ago. And I actually paid for his education in London. He came to the United States and right away, Microsoft started offering him, you know, million dollars in a home and all this stuff. And he, he said, 
no, that why did they why are they offering so much money? There's something wrong when that's how it's being done. And just went to work for some little startup that was working on the the first avatars back when the internet was slow and dial up and and uh, online services. He did something that, that was like for the good humanity. He wound up working for other major operations like Yahoo and and Facebook. But um, I, I like the the integrity. Integrity is a big thing, you know. I'm going to work for somebody who's doing something really new that's going to benefit society, not who's paying me the most. And Steve Wozniak, you you mentioned uh, your your former partner Steve uh, Jobs a bunch of times today. You mentioned your your lifelong uh, your friendship with him until his uh, passing. I know it's a big question, but if he was around today just for one day and he saw what Apple is now, what do you think? Uh, how would you think he would react? I think he'd have his own ideas. <laughs> it's something done by someone else. He, he preferred to do it himself, but it would be better for the world. And he would, and he would be. Would he be glad to see what Apple has become today, as as you see it? I believe he would. I think he'd have maybe regrets that it didn't go into some other things as well, and was even bigger. And if he were only there and been able to witness it, but uh, I think he'd be extremely happy. I think he uh, really. If you look at Tim Cook talking about his story of the day that he met Steve Jobs, and he said, "This is the company I have to work for because of the way Steve Jobs thought and worked." And uh, and he carries that along with him everywhere he goes. Why is Apple the best company? I, I remember talking about values in life and religious values with Steve when we were very very young. And why is Apple the one company that doesn't care about your gender, or, you know, or if you're you're gay or trans or anything? Why is it the one company that just doesn't pay attention to those things? It's um, absolutely for, right from the very top down, you know. And uh, I'm glad, and I think that's going to have a big influence on the rest of the world in the end.